The Indiana Pacers were one of the most active teams this offseason, bringing in Bruce Brown, bringing in Obi Toppin, and bringing in Jarris Walker and Ben Shepard. But I'm going to be honest with you guys. I don't think they're going to be that good. What's good, guys? We're back here with another video. And today we are here to talk about the Indiana Pacers. Now, don't mind my bed. I'm walking my seats. Just don't pay attention. The Indiana Pacers made a lot of moves. I think they're very fun. We're going to talk about them. I have some positive things to say. But I think the stuff that I'm hearing from every other, a lot of other people talking about um, they're going to be a playoff team, a lot playoff team at that, a top six seed, all that stuff, I'm canceling all that today. I don't believe none of that stuff, and I don't understand why people believe any of that stuff. So let's get straight into it. Now, the Indiana Pacers have a lot of stuff that I like, especially Tyrese Halliburton and Benedict Mathen. I think in the future, years down the line, that can be a very explosive in a top five backcourt in the league. I'm very high on Tyrese, and I am much more higher on Benedict Mathen. I think Benedict Mathen should have been a top five lock pick last year, um, and I think teams are going to regret not picking him in that top five. But talk about Tyrese. You already know about Tyrese, how I feel about Tyrese. I think Tyrese is a, a top 10 point guard in this league. Arguably, it's like around him and Jalen Brunson, and um, not him and Jalen Brunson, him and Jamal Murray, and Lamella Ball. That's my arguments. But Tyrese Halliburton is a very good point guard in this league. Um, I love how he, they let him run the team. Like he told Rick Car Carlisle as soon as he got there that he's going to run. He said it in an interview before, and I could see it. Like they run all the time. I wouldn't be surprised if they are the highest paced offense, and that is because of him. I love how he gets the rebound, and he gets the all that pass, and he is going. And that creates so much open shots for everybody around him. So I love Tyrese, the player. I do think he needs to get better with a shot creation, but he does average 20 points. So he's only going to steadily get better and better. But, um, and I want to see more on the other side of the ball, like for him to be 6'5", what with a 6'7", 6'8", one span, he should be way better on defense. He's not good. Like some smaller guys are better than him on defense. He is not good at all. But at the two, a couple weeks ago, would have been Buddy Hill. But you see, Buddy Hill and his and the Pacers are working on a trade. And how I feel about that, I think that's bad for them. But we will get to that at the end of this video. So at the two, I think they're going to start Benedict Mathurin. Like I said, I think he's going to be a perfect fit right there. Can shoot the ball. Not like Buddy. That's why Buddy's a big loss. Because Buddy's like all-time levels. Benedict is still getting better with the shooting. But Benedict can shoot the ball. Um, I think he had a very good shooting season last year. It kind of faded off at the end. But it, he was starting off very, very good. Um, I want to see him off ball more because I, I think it's a reason why they had him be a six man so he can get the ball and have the ball control the ball and it worked out for him. He started taking it to the rim a lot to a lot of fouls for a rookie. So I want to see him off ball playing next to Tyrese more and I think they can do that because he started off in college as an off ball guard. So I think he's going to be able to fit right into that position. But Buddy Hill was just such a crazy shooter. But like I said, we'll talk about that. Um, at three, this is the, one of my iffy parts. Bruce Brown. I like Bruce Brown, a player. I think Bruce Brown, a player, is very good. But I don't understand his role with this team at all. I love Bruce Brown on his previous teams because he was given a role to defend, play off ball. But when we need you to play on ball, you can play on ball. You can play the point guard. We need you to rebound. We need you to shoot. I get that. He can still have this role with this team, but it's not going to fit well. Because he's playing a whole new position for the whole season. Another season, he's kind of played like a point guard, a point guard slash power forward role, especially last year. And with this team, they don't really need that. They just need him to be the three. And I, I don't think he's big enough to be a three in the NBA. Like with the fours in the East, the big teams, the huge teams in the East, you're asking him to go out there and guard the Chris Millicent, ask him to go out there and guard the Jason Tatum, the Jalen Brown, the James Hart. Like it's so many fours out in the East. and that's kind of hard for him to do off the bat. Like, it would be a struggle for him to even guard R.J. Barrett just because how huge and strong R.J. Barrett is. Like, I don't know what his role is. And I think they kind of put him in a bad spot starting him at three. But if, when you look at it, they don't have no other option. They don't have fours on his team. That's something we will talk about later on in the video. But I do think he can fit with the team. I do think he can play off ball. But I think they're going to ask him to do a lot off ball and like little to nothing on the ball. And that's something that might hurt him because he kind of slid into that role for these last two teams. And he played very good in that role. But at the four, I don't know where they start. Um, it's up in the air, but I will start OB. I think it makes sense to start OB. Um, I think OB can be fun on this team, but we don't know. Like a lot of people going off speculation, what we've seen um, from Dayton College. We haven't really seen nothing from OB in, in New York Knicks jersey. He's just been running, dunking, spotting up. And fuck, he might have that same role with this team. That's the bad part. But still, I don't know what, how he fits with this team, but I know he's going to be fun because Tyrese is a lot of their guy. 
that is a loud third guy. Putting them two together is automatically going to be fun. He can't shoot off ball. But me, the OB top, and I knew coming out of college, he was a lot more on ball. And I think they should kind of go to that a lot more. And I think this is a very good fit for him. But I don't know if they're going to go into that fit because they don't do no post-up shit. And I think he needs to post up, but they don't do that. They run. They run all the time. They're moving off ball, all that stuff. That's not really him. That's why I feel like other teams should have probably went and got him because he could fit better. But like, We'll see with that fit, but then you got Miles Turner at the five, which is like a safety blanket. Like <laughs> any team he goes on to, he's always gonna fit. Um, off the bench is a part where I'm actually really excited for this team. TJ McConnell always gonna be steady. When Tyrese goes off, he can pick it up. Not to the level of Tyrese did, but he can pick it up, give you the assist, give you the playmaking, and give you much. I mean, much more defense. And I like him as a leader off the bench, but I also like Andrew Nembhard. To me, I think he can be a star point guard in the league. I look at him like I looked at um, Ty Jones, Ty, Trey, Ty Jones. I looked at him like I look at, I think it's Trey, actually. I don't know. One of the Jones brothers, I look at him like I look at him. I just think with a bigger opportunity, they could be a point guard. Like, I've seen it from him since college, too. And I've seen it last year in the NBA when Tyree went out. He was playing and making very well. They just didn't have a talented enough team, so they're obviously going to lose. But I think he's a very good playmaker. Um, he needs to work on the shooting. Like, that's pretty bad. Pretty end, but still, like he needs to work on his shooting. But I still like him as a point guard on defense. I think he's very good, especially for a second year guy. Um, going down on the list, they have Isaiah Jackson to me, one of the most underrated backup bigs in the league. Man, he's just for backup bigs, he's everything you want rebounding, running the floor, shot blocking, sometimes can shoot the ball. Like, that's all you want in a backup big, and he fills all that role. He fits perfectly with the team because he's gonna run his ass off. Jalen Smith, this is the last year, <laughs> this is the last year, like. I thought this was the perfect team for him. He didn't really take advantage of his opportunities that he had with his team. I understand, like, the first two or three years with the Suns. He didn't get enough. But, like, last year, he had all the opportunities in the world. Didn't shoot good at all. Didn't play well at all. Like, I need Jalen Smith to be good this year because I think he can fit perfectly with the team. But if he doesn't, you have Daniel Sykes, who works perfectly with the team also as a rebounder, defender, um, can't shoot the ball. We've seen it overseas. Like, they, he, he's nice. He's nice. And then they got um, Jairus Walker coming out of the draft. It's an argument if he should start. I'm not gonna lie. It's an argument for real. If I, I forgot about him when I talked about Obi earlier, but that's an argument for real. But Jarris Walker is just gonna bring everything they need. He's a winning guy. But when you look at it, I skipped over a position. I'm naming bigs. I went from point guards to bigs. Again, they don't have a forward <laughs> at all. It's no forward on this team. It's Kendall Brown, I guess. I like him, but. You know, like, that's just not, not it for this team. But they don't have four. And that's something that can fuck them in the long run. Now, the Buddy Heald situation. I think Buddy Heald is the second most important player on this team. I don't know if I'm willing to call him the second. He might be the second best player on this team. For him to be supposedly to be gone, that's a huge loss. Because, like I said, all-time shooters still shooting at all-time levels. Most, a lot of his assists. I mean, a lot of Tyrese's assists was coming from Buddy. Like, that's just automatic shooting you have right there. He's moving fast. He's just, he's perfect for this team, and that's a forward. Even though it's not the best option, that's one of the options they had at the forward to lose that, like, like kind of a glue guy. Of course, Tyrese is the bigger glue guy, but, like, Buddy just fits everything and brings everything together. You have to guard Buddy. Because you leave him open, it's up. It's up. And then if you double him, because, I mean, if you're late to the, it's like, it's so hard to guard Buddy. I stuttered a lot, still mind it. Still, losing Buddy, that's going to be hard. That's going to be very hard. So, my question is, can we see a jump from Benedict Mather and kind of fill in with Buddy bringing him? Can we see um, Bruce Brown kind of fill in with Buddy bringing him? I don't know. I don't know. I think a lot of people look at this team, see, yeah, they added Bruce Brown, yeah, they added OB, Jairus Walker, um, Ben, ben Shepard, who's probably not going to play his first season. But, like, those are cute additions, but, like, they are still they still have problems. And you know you're going to hear that, oh, when Tyrese was there for the first month and a half, they were good. Yeah, their schedule was not that good. And they were doing what they were supposed to do. And then when he went out, they lost. And then when he came back, they started losing again. And it's just, they went... I think I've seen 11 and 21 against teams that were over 500. Like, this team is okay, but they're not that good. The addition of Bruce Brown is good, but, like, what is he going to bring? I don't know. That, like, what role is he, is he going to do? I have, I don't know. Obi Toppin, it's not a lot of positives in, in his career so far. You can say he's been in a bad situation still. 
what is he going to do with this team? It's a question if he's even going to fucking start over a rookie. Like, I don't see that. Jairus Walker is young. You don't expect that much from him to like change this whole course of the season, make them super good. You don't expect that in year one. You see it down the line, but you don't see that in year one. I have my questions with this team. Can Tarvis do it as the number one? Because the East, not even just the East, the NBA. Like I say, it's like two or three teams taken. Everybody, every night is trying to win. Even the fucking shitty team. Houston doesn't have their pick next year. They're going to try to win every night. Like, there's no team that's going to be like, all right, like the only team that's going to tank is the Spurs. Um, the, the, Not the Hornets, the Wizards. And then like somebody on the West that I can't think about right now. But a lot of teams are not going to tank. Damn near 95% of the league is going to be trying to win games. And I don't know if this team is good enough to be a lot playing team at that. I don't know. How can you look me in my eye and say I'm crazy for taking the Hornets over there? The Hornets have done it. They've shown they had experience. They all they gotten better. The team got better along with the Pacers got better. Why can't they be over there? The, why is this team so much ahead of the Pistons? Stuff like that. You gotta really persuade me. Like, why are they over the Bulls all of a sudden? People lock them over the Bulls. The Bulls, even though they're not gonna be good in the future, they're always gonna be steady. They have the more Roots and Zach Levine. That team is not falling out the fucking play in. Be honest with yourself. Those three guys, even though they might be overrated to some, but the three all star caliber guys, they're not falling out of the plane. Why? The Raptors, especially if the motherfuckers get that. What? Like, come on now. Like, this Pacers team is fun. I get it. They're fun. They're going to be fun to watch. But be honest with yourself. They're not that good. <laughs> like, they're not that good, bro. They're going to be around that um, Hornets and Detroit tier. Like, they're not going to be above that. They're not going to be in the tier with the Hawks and, and the Knicks and the Cavs. They're not, I don't even know if they could fuck around and be in the tier with the Bulls and the Raptors and the Heat. Like, stuff like that it's, no bro it's they're young this is the problem this is the problem but the nba we're so quick to jump shit instead of just letting shit settle let this shit marinate like martin said let it marinate this team is a young team bro let them grow don't expect them to be that good next year because they're gonna disappoint you now if they fuck me up and they're top 60 i will come on here i will make a video i was wrong i was wrong i was wrong but still I just don't see it, especially if you're gonna lose Buddy. Buddy, fuck around with 22 million. It's his, his, like, he don't have a lot of pool right now. He don't have a lot of value. So, you're not really gonna get shit for Buddy. You'll probably get like a couple seconds and a little nigga off the bench. Like, come on now. Like, Buddy's not gonna get that much. So, if you're expecting to get something from Buddy, come on now. Now, one day I wanna say, I said this on the Soul Hoops pot. I think that was a pot. Yeah, Soul Hoops podcast. Um, I heard that the Raptors and the Blazers are talking, and then I heard that the they were talking about obviously about them, but I heard that the Indiana Pacers can be a, a team that can kind of facilitate that deal because you know it's not just going to be two teams, it's going to be like three or four. Now, if they can find a way to get OG out, that motherfucker, shit, shit, they, they on to something because they need a forward because I'm telling you, their defense is going to be ass. It's going to be so garbage. <laughs> if you think Bruce Brown's going to be, if y'all think y'all going to be a, a, at least a mediocre defense when Bruce Brown is your best perimeter defender, fucking wait. Wait, y'all going to be <laughs> But that's it for this video, man. I, I don't want to make it seem like I'm hating on the Pacers. I do like the Pacers. I want to watch them a lot because I'm, I'm going to agree. They're going to be fun. They're not going to win a lot. I, they're selling to me like 35 wins. I see them around like 32. They're not going to win a lot. A lot. It's going to be a high... Not scoring, but high win lead this year. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if, like, in each, ca in each conference, it's like 450 win team. Like, it's, it's the NBA is bad. It's bad, bro. So, that's it for this video. I'll talk to you guys later on this week. <laughs> Peace. Oh, no, got the recipe.